Myofibroma is a benign neoplasm which occurs in small children and it is most common from birth to two years of age. It can be solitary or multicentric, in which case we call it myofibromatosis. The most common location is uh, the subcutaneous tissue of the head and neck area. And here we see uh, an example of myofibroma localized in the dermis. It is a well-circumscribed lesion which has two components. Here we have uh, the nodules or lobules composed of myoid cells. That's the first component. And in between these lobules we see more cellular component which uh, resembles solitary fibrous tumor uh, which was previously called hemangioparasitoma, and that's the second component. Well, first, let's pay attention to these myoid nodules. The central zone is quite hypocellular with, uh, these, uh, with this myxoid or chondromyxoid background, which is a typical morphological feature of myofibroma. That's what we call this bluish, grayish, uh, amorphous substance in between the cells. Uh, it resembles the, the normal extracellular uh, matrix in the normal cartilage. And on this background, we see these multiple spindle cells. They have elongated nuclei with finely granular chromatin, and usually with uh, one or two inconspicuous nucleoli. At least some of these nuclei have pointed ends. So this is another area. So these elongated nuclei with pointed ends with inconspicuous nucleoli um, and eosinophilic cytoplasm without clear borders on the chondromyxoid bluish grayish background. These myoid nodules are usually more cellular in the periphery. And in between them, we can see the second component, which is much more cellular. And it is composed of these irregular uh, vascular patterns, which is a characteristic feature of hemangioparasitoma-like morphology. So all of these cells are relatively uniform and bland. We don't see many, many mitotic figures or atypical morphological features. They are slightly elongated or spindle-shaped, and they are intermixed with these staghorn-like blood vessels. They are called staghorn because we see these branching uh, branching pattern which resembles the horn of the stag. This is another example of myofibroma, so we see similar morphology. Here we have the epidermis and um, here we can see the dermally located well-circumscribed lesion composed of these myoid nodules and lobules and uh, for example here we have uh, the typical second more cellular hemangioparasitoma-like component so branching of the vessels, bland elongated cells, and less cellular or hypocellular myoid nodules with um, mixochondroid background. Immunohistochemically, these lesions might be positive for smooth muscle actin and calponin. However, the desmin and caldesmin, which are other markers of uh, muscle differentiation, they are usually negative. S100 and cytokeratins uh, are also negative. S100 is a marker of Schwann cell differentiation and melanocytic differentiation, and cytokeratins are markers of epithelial uh, differentiation. So all of those uh, stains uh, will be negative in myofibroma. Even though myofibromas are benign lesions, they can be problematic if they are multiple and if they occur in the visceral organs. So solitary subcutaneous myofibromas have a good prognosis and they are usually treated by simple surgical excision. Prognosis of the myofibromatosis depends on the location. Sometimes they can involve lungs, which is a poor prognostic factor. Thanks for watching.